So in the second part of uh, alpha carbon chemistry, we're going to learn about aldol reactions and Claisen reactions. So let's talk about aldol first, okay? This is reaction and condensation. So we'll talk about what the difference between the two is. So here, uh, the aldol reactions are very specific. Aldol reaction, aldol is actually the product, okay? It's not the starting material. So aldol reactions occur when an aldehyde reacts with another aldehyde in presence of a strong base. So we have talked about the fact that, you know, when you have an aldehyde or a ketone, then you can use a base to abstract the alpha proton. That alpha proton, once abstracted, will give you a nucleophile. So this nucleophile we have been using before in the previous reactions for substitution reactions, right, with bromine and alkyl halides. But you can also use that nucleophile to react with another aldehyde molecule. So back then when I was going through all those reactions, I said, well, there are some side reactions. Well, here is a side reaction that can happen. So this nucleophile that is generated can react with another aldehyde and then give a product which looks like this. And I know it looks a little bit busy over here, okay? But I wanted to show you simply the fact that there is an aldehyde group here and there is an alcohol group, okay? So let's follow the mechanism, see what's happening. So here's the carbon nucleophile attacking the carbonyl, just like a nucleophile would attack a carbonyl. Electrons move here. So what happens then is you form a new bond, okay? And the new bond that is formed, and I've shown that in the final one, uh, final product also, but right here is the new bond, okay? Because this is the reaction that's going on. So you form a new bond that gives you an oxide over here. That aldehyde does not change. That is still there, okay? The other aldehyde is gone, that turns into an alcohol because when that oxide is created, it picks up a proton, okay? So this, the, a second molecule of the aldehyde is going from an sp2 carbon to an sp3 carbon and giving you an alcohol in the process, okay? So I've highlighted the new bond for you. I've highlighted the fact that you still have the aldehyde and now you also created an alcohol. So the aldol comes from the fact that you have an aldehyde and you have an alcohol, okay, in the product. That's kind of what happens. So in some cases, and depending on how far you want to take the reaction, you can also form water. And we will talk about that also, okay? But for right now, it's important for you to understand that an aldehyde molecule is reacting with another one provided that you give it a strong base. And the base that's used here usually is sodium hydroxide. So what happens is you can take this aldol product and if you heat it, then you can cause dehydration. So you lose water and that's the condensation part of the reaction. So aldol reaction and aldol condensation, two different things. Aldol reaction is forming the aldol product and aldol condensation is taking it one step further to give a water molecule. Condensation in organic chemistry generally means that you're producing a small molecule uh, as a product. Could be ammonia, water, HCl, whatever it is, okay? It's a small molecule that's given out. So these are such common types of reactions that they have a name, right? Condensation, but anyhow. So here you uh, release water. So like dehydration reactions, right? So that's what's going on here. That dehydration, by the way, just want to mention this to you, it should be a Zite Saves product, okay? So more stable alkene, uh, it should not be the Hoffman product. So because it's a normal dehydration, here is the mechanism for it. So you form a more conjugated product than anything else, okay? So that's the dehydration that you can further do with the aldol. So I mean, like you've, created, you've taken an aldehyde, you've done so many things with it right now. Just taking an aldehyde, you created a new carbon-carbon bond, which means that you join two molecules together. You formed an alcohol, so you can do reactions on the alcohol now, and if you don't want to, you can also create an alkene. That alkene also gives you so many more reactions you can do on that functional group, right? So, I mean, there's so many possibilities here. <clears throat> now, you can do cross-aldol reactions. In a cross-aldol reaction, you actually have two different 
aldehydes, okay? And so, <clears throat> in the previous slide, I had taken the same one, acetaldehyde, okay? The same aldehyde. But if you have two different aldehydes, then that kind of a reaction is called cross aldol because, you know, two different aldehydes. So, um, I have this in the next slide because uh, there's going to be too many products, okay, formed from this one. Um, and the one question that I would like you to think about as we go on is, you know, how you can control this kind of a reaction. So, let's look at the products first. Okay, so I don't want to overwhelm you, but yeah, really, you do form so many products. Why? And just kind of follow it through with the mechanism is that you have, you know, this aldehyde if you're starting with like acetaldehyde. So if you have acetaldehyde and then propanol, okay, ethanol and propanol that you're reacting, at one time the ethanol is going to produce the nucleophile. At one time, the propanol is going to form the nucleophile. The ethanol can react with ethanol. The ethanol can react with propanol. If you form a propanol nucleophile, that can react with an ethanol, or a propanol can react with propanol. And if you're thinking, well, an ethanol with propanol or propanol with ethanol will give you the same product, well, think again, okay? That does not happen. So, and that's the thing about these reactions, okay? You have to write the products out, okay? And I always say this, okay, that whenever you're in doubt, just write it out, okay? Write out the products name the products if you want to okay take it one step further name the product and then you will see if you have the same kind of product or not okay so here i've given everything in one step you will never 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 write it like this for me when i'm asking for mechanism but i didn't want to spread it out into three slides so i just you know put everything in one but for for you what you're going to do is your first step is making this second step is this uh, third step is this, okay? So this is a three-step mechanism, not a one-step thing going on, okay? So do not do this. Uh, that's my disclaimer to you, okay, over here. So, but I wanted to show this so you can clearly see what's going on and we form a product at the end. So uh, ethanol reacting with the carbonyl of another ethanol and then the oxide getting protonated, okay? And so then you get this. By the way, I mean, you can do this like when you're doing an exam, right? Because then you don't have time to write the three steps. So do it quickly, okay, at that time, but not for grading purpose, okay? So that you can't do that, okay? Um, anyhow, so you form an alcohol. Now, this looks really weird. And what I've tried to do here is I've tried to uh, write the two ethanols in such a way so you can see the connection going on and i've numbered everything okay so hopefully that helps you out too and then i've written it out in a proper format okay so that's kind of what i've done here for you hopefully you will understand what's going on then okay so here you have an ethanol reacting with the propanol so the propanol is carbon number three and then four five so this is what's going on here is the ethanol here is the propanol carbonyl and then here is the the product that you will form in a nice neat manner okay and then if you had a propanol that was formed into a nucleophile uh, the alpha proton is right there right and so then this is going to do the reaction with the ethanol and then this is what you end up getting and you can see that these two products are very different okay here uh, when the ethanol was reacting with the propanol the alcohol is on carbon number three whereas now it's on carbon number four okay and carbon number three has a methyl group so not the same products okay so anyway go through this so you can understand what's going on here okay so it's not the same thing okay that you have an ethanol reacting with the propanol versus propanol reacting with ethanol you end up getting four different products so uh you know the question becomes then how do you control that right we don't want four products maybe this is the product you want. well if this is the product you want you don't even have to worry about but if you wanted this product if you wanted ethanol to react with propanol and this is the only product you wanted 
how do you prevent the other one from forming then okay so this is something that i would like you to think about okay and you can email me the answer if you want to and you know i would love to hear from you okay about how you can control this reaction so it goes your way and not how the reaction wants to go okay so you should be able to control the reaction you want okay and get the product you want that's the whole point of being a chemist Okay, so this is what we call cross aldol. Okay, now you can also do cross aldol with an aldehyde and a ketone. So, I mean, basically what we're doing is we're taking the same kind of principle, we're just reacting it with different things, right? So, once we did aldehyde with aldehyde, then we talked about the condensation, you can dehydrate the alcohol. Then we took two different aldehydes. Now we're taking an aldehyde and a ketone, okay? So here is benzaldehyde and here is acetone, okay? So you can do the same reaction starting with a ketone. So here's the ketone that's starting the reaction. Benzaldehyde here does not have an alpha proton because this is a phenyl ring, okay? So phenyl ring, this is substituted. So that carbon does not have any protons on there. So here is the uh, acetone with the alpha proton and then you get the uh, nucleophile that nucleophile will now react with benzaldehyde and you get this product now this reaction we do in the lab also it's a very fun reaction to do easy reaction you get great product within you know you know very short period of time within half an hour you get great product so i want to talk say two things about this reaction okay number one okay it's a cool reaction that's okay that's not number one that's the general re remark here what we are trying to do is with the aldehyde you kind of stop that kind of a cross reaction that we saw in the previous slide to get multiple products is by not even giving an alpha proton okay in there so if you you can control the reaction one way by not even having an alpha proton and benzaldehyde is fine right because benzaldehyde looks like this so if you have benzaldehyde there is no alpha proton here so this is fine okay this reaction will not start your aldehyde uh, your aldol reaction so you can use the other molecule which in this case is ketone to start the reaction the other way to prevent you know um an alpha proton or a, a or the way you can direct your reaction is by removing that alpha proton so for example if you had three methyl groups here well, this carbon is not going to do, do the reaction. So now you can promote this carbon to be the only starting material that you have, okay? This is not answering the question from the previous slide. You still have to answer that question because if you wanted a specific product, but I'm just trying to tell you because, you know, in those ones, I don't want you to change the starting material. The starting material is what it is. Um, I just wanted you to tell me how you're gonna form the product. And here I'm trying to tell you that what we are trying to do with this kind of a reaction is that you can prevent, you know, cross aldol reactions by not even giving an alpha proton to one of the starting materials. Now, the other aspect of this one is that you have a ketone, right? So this is acetone. So in case of acetone, what happens? You do this reaction. So this is the product you get, okay? And that is all well and fine okay for you but now you still have an alpha proton here right this is an alpha proton this is an alpha proton so which means that again you can keep doing this reaction so again you need to figure out a little bit of a way to control this reaction okay and not have this reaction give you other products although some products you will get here and there but there are ways of controlling this kind of a reaction okay and so that control is still going to be similar to what you do for the previous slide that I were talking about ethanol and propanol. So, but in this case, actually what we end up doing is we do two reactions here, okay? So two aldol reactions. Uh, in the lab, we isolate um, dibenzyl acetone. So here you get another one and then you will have another benzaldehyde uh, coming in and then you know this is another reaction going on so you can write that product out as well but this reaction can continue on okay so that's what happens in this reaction but i just written the first step here for you okay so you can see how cross aldols work which is an aldehyde and a ketone now if you don't remember 
that this is a cross out doll or Claisen or you know whatever it doesn't matter okay the main thing is for you to learn the mechanism the main thing is for you to be able to figure out what the product is okay all right so considering that you're dealing with uh, an aldehyde and a ketone over here you can have the aldehyde and the ketone on the same molecule and if you have it in the same molecule then you can have cyclization going on okay and that cyclization this is called like intramolecular cyclization so in the intramolecular you end up forming a ring okay so again i've numbered all the carbons here for you so you might think okay you know this is this is great it looks fantastic but why did i choose this carbon right because there are so many carbons over here so you have the alpha here alpha here alpha here right there are three alpha protons why did i choose this one okay and here is your answer for that okay so here is also the alpha here is the alpha so i've taken the same compound and written out another reaction so if i chose this alpha over here to form my ring what's going to happen so in the top case where the alpha proton that i chose was on the side gave me a six membered ring okay this is the first product i formed and so in the other one if i chose the alpha an internal alpha uh, proton i will get a four membered ring and this is not very stable okay and so you generally end up forming five membered ring or six membered rings okay those two are the most commonly formed rings most stable rings in organic chemistry so this is not going to form okay this is not that stable at all so which means that the alpha proton that's going to be selected uh, is going to be the one that i have on the top one okay and i gave you both reactions here both in the sense that i've given you uh, the uh, aldol reaction as well as the condensation okay going on over here so that way you can see that um, it doesn't matter if you have a cyclic compound you can still form an alkene okay and in this case you'll end up getting two different alkenes alkenes i mean there are ways of preventing this but sometimes there is none okay so i mean you can stop at the alcohol or you can do dehydration and you know do whatever else i don't know um so you'll have to separate these products out because you will form the two different um alkenes over here because both of these are stable this one is a little bit more stable because of conjugation okay so um that's kind of what happens here so that's internal cyclization okay for aldol products so anything is possible so here is a little bit about the retrosynthesis okay because of course you're going to do retrosynthesis so if you were given the product then how do you figure out what the starting materials are and it's very simple actually okay focus on the aldehyde or the ketone okay that you have so look at the carbonyl look for the alcohol and the carbonyl remember it's an alpha carbon chemistry so alpha carbon chemistry means that you have that carbonyl and next to that is the carbon that has the proton that was abstracted so that ch2 is the one that you're going to be looking for then you just cleave after that that's it okay it's as simple as that so then you just turn wherever the alcohol was you turn that into a carbonyl as well all right so these are your two fragments these happen to be the same fragments so here is another one so again focus on the carbonyl the ch2 next to it and then the alcohol so break that bond right there and you end up getting these two okay um keep it simple all right again zone in on the carbonyl so if you have a, a condensation product which means if you have a double bond it's the same thing okay because the double bond is going to have the alcohol okay the alcohol is not going to be on this ch2 it's going to be on this carbon okay because remember this carbonyl has an alpha carbon that alpha carbon is the one that gave the proton that proton is where the ch2 would have been okay so that's where you cleave then all right and that's where the alcohol would be and so that's kind of the um, product you will get now you can always leave it like that for me when you're submitting your assignments for me um but this is actually you know reality what it would look like but anyhow so um you know 
if you have a double bond don't get too confused either okay so put the alcohol first if you want to or just cleave the double bond that's it that's what i would do also okay because you can just just cleave that double bond that's your ch2 right there that's your uh you know carbonyl so you can do it either way okay whatever you prefer okay so Aldol products are really fantastic. You can do so much more, okay, with the um, Aldol products. The biggest thing about Aldol products is the new carbon-carbon bond formation, okay? That's the big thing. Um, you know, Diels-Alder reactions and Aldol products, these are really interesting reactions because when you're trying to make macromolecules, uh, you know, you don't build them up from one carbon. You build two or three molecules, small molecules, and then you join them together to form a big macromolecule so these kind of reactions are really good in that you know is you start with small uh, molecules and then just kind of combine them to give a large one okay instead of building it like step by step you know like a lego you don't do that okay you build two or three and then you join them together so that's kind of the interesting part about uh, carbon carbon bond formations all right, so another reaction that is very common for uh, alpha carbons is going to be the clays and condensation. Clays and condensation is for carboxylic esters, okay, very specifically for esters. So we are out of the aldehydes and ketones, and now we're into the carbonyls of the ester. Same kind of thing happens here also, okay? You have the alpha uh, carbon that has the proton, and then once you treat that with a base, then you get uh, this kind of an addition reaction where you have um, uh, you know a carbon carbon bond formation now there are a few things over here first of all you can see there's only one ester remaining okay the other ester gone okay the other thing here is that LDA is what is used as a base here okay we cannot use um, sodium hydroxide and I want you to think about why we can't use sodium hydroxide I'm leaving too many questions for you to answer in this uh, PowerPoint because by now we have done a lot of reactions we have done all the functional groups except you know maybe amines so we've done a lot of the functional groups we've done so many reactions that you should be able to answer these questions um, you know yourself so I asked you before how to control a reaction how to make sure that you get the product that you get and here I'm asking you this one is actually a simpler question is why can you not use sodium hydroxide here? Why do you have to use LDA or methoxide ethoxides, okay, over here? So why can't you use sodium hydroxide? Let me know, okay? All right, meanwhile, here is your alpha uh, carbon, okay, with the um, proton over here for the ester. This is the mechanism, by the way. Of course, you can tell that. And then here comes LDA, picks up a proton. So I think that arrow is missing, and that's okay. I mean, you understand what's going on here. So that's that. And then once you create the um, nucleophile, then it's going to react with the carbonyl as usual okay so you end up getting this kind of an oxide now this is where the interesting thing is okay is uh, how you end up getting this kind of a keto group okay so what i've done here is i've just kind of rearranged it a little bit for you uh, so that we have a straight compound okay so that's all uh, that i've given you a you know little uh, disclaimer there that i've just rearranged it but really what's going on is that this is going to come down here this is going to go away okay so that's exactly what i have here also is that the oxide forms the double bond again and then the methoxide is leaving okay over here so you end up getting this kind of a keto ester okay so here is the keto and of course here is the ester okay that is combined with that ch2 that's the alpha proton that started this whole reaction so Another thing that I want to point out here is that the methoxide is the leaving group here, okay? Methoxide by itself, from what we have learned, you know, previously, is it's just a great nucleophile. It's a wonderful nucleophile, um, and it, you know, it's a strong base also. I mean, we, I'm just saying that you can use ethoxide, methoxide, right, as your bases also. So it's a strong base also. 
but this is not as strong as the LDA, and that's why it can be a leaving group, okay, over here. So ethoxides, methoxides, if those were the bases, then sure, this can leave no problem. But with LDA, just to let you know that, you know, that also is uh, a strong base, and so uh, this is a good leaving group, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and erase all that so it's nice and neat uh, and clean before we leave the slide. So hopefully all the mechanism is clear, and again, remember, that this portion that I've done is just to rearrange the structure, okay, and nothing else there. So this is a clays and condensation, which is then between two esters. Now you can have the same esters, you can have different esters also. And here I have the different esters for you, okay? So I've color coded them, so you can see which one is coming from where. You can write the mechanism out, so hopefully now you're a little bit more comfortable um, in writing the mechanism. And again, you're gonna have the question that how do you control this reaction, right? Because as soon as you have two different starting materials, you can get a mixture of products, okay? So if I am writing it like this, most of the times, you know, what we think like in class when I ask this question is everybody's going to start with the first one, okay? So because they think like, you know, I give this one first, so this is the one that, you know, should be the alpha proton and not this one as the alpha. Well, well why not, you know? I, I could have easily written this one first. It doesn't mean that I want you to react this one first, right? So it's the product that you have to see and then determine where is the alpha proton coming from. So obviously looking at the product, the alpha proton is coming from the pink fragment, which is this one then, okay? So this is, this is the one that's starting the reaction. So yeah, naturally I wrote it first, but that's not naturally though, okay? So it may not happen. So again, you have to think about how can I control this reaction to give me just the product that I want, okay? So think about that. Um, that question is not done yet, or right? we're still we're still working on that. Okay, slowly, slowly. Hopefully, you will have the answer for me. Okay, and then uh, you can also have cyclizations. Okay, so similar to what we did for aldol reactions, you can do the same thing here. So I took a nice long chain because that will give us a cyclohexane. Now, if I don't give you a nice long chain and you have only like five carbons in between or four carbons in between, don't worry about it. Just give me the product, okay, that you're supposed to form. Regardless of whether it is stable or not, it doesn't matter, okay? So if I've given you four carbons, so obviously I haven't given you much choice there, okay? So, but that's not the point. My point is for you to learn the reaction regarding the stability that also you're learning because then you will tell me, well, look, uh, you know, this is not going to form that easily because it's not a stable ring. And even if you don't write that, it's okay. But if you had a choice, if you had a choice of forming the more stable ring, you should form the more stable ring, okay? Anyway, so this is again internal cyclization going on. And here is the retrosynthesis, okay, also. So I've given you everything. Hopefully, you know, all of this is kind of sinking in with you. So retrosynthesis is kind of just like what you would do for aldol also is look for the ketone, not for the, or so excuse me, look for the ketone and the ester. I would start with the ester, okay? So look at the ester and then find the CH2 next to it because that's the alpha carbon, okay? And then wherever you cleave, Remember, you have to make it an ester, okay? Because clays and condensations is all about esters. Uh, it, 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 by the way, if you're thinking what kind of est ester, it, you know, what should I put over here for the ester? Just put whatever is on here, okay? So here it was the methyl ester, just put a methyl ester here, that's it. I mean, even if you had ethyl ester, it's not gonna make a difference, but since this is methyl, go ahead and put methyl, okay? So here, because we're starting with an ethyl, and here is your ester, so that's your alpha carbon right there. And that alpha carbon is where you're going to break, okay? Then right here, I've given you cleavage. So that's where you break it apart then. And then just give an ethyl ester, okay? Because this is also an ethyl ester. Just, you know, give it the same kind. So um, hopefully this is all clear as well. So here are some worked examples. And so this one is, um, you know, um, aldol cyclizations esters so try it out because as usual i do have the answers but you know 
make sure you do it on your own. Um, the interesting thing about clays and reactions is that you can do so much more with it. You know, so once you have a ketone, once you have an ester, you can do so many reactions, okay, with it. So I've given you some examples, okay, of the reactions. So, and by the way, the question I was asking you about why you should use um, LDA and not sodium hydroxide, the answer is on this slide if you can find it. Okay, all right, I think I'm done now. That's it.